Coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, we'll take a look at some roster moves that the Silver and Black have made. We'll look at the latest injury report. Plus, we'll take you inside the Raiders locker room as they prepare for this game on Sunday, the Battle of the Bay by way of Las Vegas with the San Francisco 49ers. Your calls and texts will close out the show. It's all coming up on Friday's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast, December 30th, 2022. Just win. Just win. Just win. Just win. The autumn wind is a raider. Pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down and laugh when he's conquered and won. And won. And won. And won. Welcome in Raider Nation to another edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast. Thank you so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Locked On Raider podcast free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Again, uh, pushing really hard when it comes to subscriptions on YouTube. We're growing uh, by leaps and bounds, man. I really got to thank you so much for, uh, you know, supporting the YouTube page. And shout out to my man Ari, who makes sure that we're up on YouTube each and every day at Ari Produces on Twitter. Today's edition of the Locked On Raiders podcast is brought to you by BetOnline.net. They got you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net, that's where the game starts. I'll tell you a lot more about them coming up in the end or later in the show, maybe segment number two. At the end of segment number two, uh, we'll tell you about BetOnline.net. But let's go ahead and get into it. It's the last show for 2022. Think about this. When we get back here on Monday, talking on the Locked On Raiders podcast, we'll be talking about one Uh, the Raiders 49er game on Sunday, but we'll also be talking about 2023 and it'll be January 2nd. So yeah, man, that, that 2022 calendar year has flown by. So uh, off top, make sure everyone is safe this upcoming weekend, man, whatever you decide to do, however you decide to celebrate your new year's Eve and your welcome into 2023, make sure you do it safely, man. Don't want to hear about anything bad happening, but let's go ahead and get into the show and let's talk about some of the roster moves that the Raiders made on Wednesday and Thursday didn't have a chance chance to go over them because of all the stuff going on with Derek Carr and that really stole the headlines in a major way not only locally not only on the podcast but nationally <laughs> I've been a busy dude uh, doing a lot of different shows uh, having a lot of different interviews just everyone wants to talk about what's going on with the Raiders so let's go ahead and get down to some of the roster moves The Raiders placed Chandler Jones and linebacker Denzel Perryman on IR. I don't think that's a big surprise. We knew that they were pretty banged up coming out of that Christmas Eve game against the Steelers. So them going on IR, shutting them down for the rest of the season, not a big surprise. Thursday, the Raiders put cornerback Rocky Asin, put him on IR as well. So he's done for the rest of the season. So those three dudes, Chandler Jones, Denzel Perryman, Rocky Asin, all going to be done. Perriman and Rocky Asin were in the final year of their deal. Of course, Chandler Jones got that free agent money before the season started coming over from the Cardinals to the Raiders. So we'll see what his status is in 2023. But Perriman and Rocky Asin might have seen the last of them in uniforms that are silver and black. Uh, also, the Raiders, they made a couple signings. Defensive end slash linebacker uh, Isaiah Rochelle. Uh, he was signed out of the Cleveland Browns uh, organization. He was part of their practice squad. He was signed to the active roster with the Raiders. They also signed linebacker Harvey Lange to the active roster from the practice squad. They signed defensive lineman Trent Harris to the practice squad. And they released wide receiver Albert Wilson from the practice squad and restored offensive lineman Vitaly German to the practice squad. So you got all that? <laughs> Repeat it back to me real quick, fast, and hurry. A lot of little moves. Nothing major, but a lot of little moves that the Raiders made the past few days. Also, the injury report for the Raiders and the 49ers didn't get a chance to go over that yet this week. We find out on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, game status will get you know about 90 minutes before kickoff we'll find out who's the actives and inactives but we did get the report on wednesday and thursday but didn't get a chance to go over it so let's go ahead and do it really quickly uh, as i mentioned rocky has seen he's on ir so obviously he's not playing the rest of the season running back zamir white dealing with the ankle injury limited wednesday and thursday nate hobbs cornerback dealing with the quadricep injury full participant on wednesday and thursday that's good like to see nate hobbs start to turn the corner and kind of get back to the guy that we all expected him to be just seems like he's taking a step back Coming back from that hand injury, he just hasn't been the same guy, even though he was pretty good against the Chargers. The last few games, Nate Hobbs has not been too good. Derek Carr, we know he's away from the team, so he's not participating. Again, he's not even uh, around the team, so he's just listed on the injury report. NIR, personal, which again, just means that he's not with the team. Tackle Jackson Barton, back injury, limited both Wednesday and Thursday. And then guard Alex Bars, knee injury, full participant Wednesday and Thursday. And that's all for the Raiders when it comes to their injury report. A couple guys um, that are on the San Francisco 49ers injury report, uh, Nick Bosa, 
dealing with the illness, did not participate on Wednesday. He was back in full participant on Thursday. Uh, let's see, Trent Williams, tackle. He rested on Wednesday, full participant on Thursday. Debo Samuel, ankle knee injury, didn't participate Wednesday, limited on Thursday. Uh, defensive tackle Javon Kinlaw, knee injury, didn't participate on Wednesday, fully participated on Thursday. Uh, defensive lineman Kevin Givens, knee injury, didn't participate Wednesday or Thursday. Quarterback Jimmy G, we know he's not coming back. He's dealing with a foot injury, didn't participate Wednesday or Thursday. He won't be out there on Sunday. Uh, I already mentioned Nick Bosa. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, uh, he's dealing with a knee injury, limited both Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Jordan Mason, the running back, hamstring, limited Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, Kerry Hyder, ankle injury, limited Wednesday and Thursday. And Eric Armstead, foot and ankle injury, limited Wednesday and Thursday. Brock Purdy, uh, the quarterback, oblique and rib injury, full participant Wednesday and Thursday. He'll be behind center come Sunday. So uh, they had a lot of guys that didn't participate on Wednesday and guys were limited and still got a lot of guys limited. But I'm sure most of those dudes will be back come Sunday as they prepare for the game. So it is a game. It is still the Battle of the Bay by way of Las Vegas. Is at least that's the way I like to say it. It's still Raiders and 49ers. That means something. I don't know what it means right now to the younger players because they're obviously not in the era where it was, it was the Battle of the Bay and it was a squabble between the Niners and the Raiders. It was bragging rights. It had a whole lot of everything, right? Well, the game still has to be played, and it will be played on Sunday at Allegiant Stadium. Not sure what the crowd's going to look like. Of course, we'll see it when we get in there on Sunday. I'm expecting to see a lot of red in there, but... You know, it kind of is what it is. So hopefully, Raider Nation, if you have your tickets to the game, you're out there. But we'll talk about the game. We'll take inside the Raiders locker room as they prepare for the game on Sunday. We'll do that coming up in segment number two. You'll hear from Lincoln Kennedy. He'll tell you what the Battle of the Bay meant to him. You'll hear from quarterback Jarrett Stidham and also Mad Max Crosby. That's all coming up in segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Before I get to that, though, I do want to let you know and remind you, since it is a holiday weekend and we know a lot of people are going to be out there partying uh, in Las Vegas and everywhere else, for New Year's Eve, heading into the new year. There's a lot to remember. And one is if, if you drive high, you're considered driving under the influence. Driving under the influence of weed is against the law in every state. It's, it's against the law here in Las Vegas, so you cannot do it. It means driving high could get you a DUI. And if you think law enforcement officers can't tell when you're high, you're wrong. Everybody could tell. Your friends could tell, coworkers, parents, everybody. So, of course, law enforcement officers, they're going to be able to tell when you're high as well. And please believe, especially around this area, they are always out looking for drunk drivers and looking for guys that are high. So driving under the influence of weed can slow your response time and change how you perceive time and speed. If you think you're fine to drive when you're high, you're not. Bottom line is, if you feel different, you drive different. Driving high is driving under the influence. So remember, drive high, get a DUI. Paid for by NHTSA. All right, Raider Nation, here we go. Segment number two of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Want to take you inside the Raiders locker room. Want you to hear from Max Crosby. Want you to hear from Jared Stidham. He was a guy that we all expected to talk to on Wednesday, but didn't get the opportunity. Of course, that's the day that everything went down with Derek Carr. He was not available to the media, but he was made available on Thursday. And Max Crosby as well talked to the media following practice. So you'll hear both of those conversations in just a little while. With Max, it's only about a minute. With Jared Stidham, some really good stuff, about seven minutes. So really good stuff with the quarterback that will be under center come Sunday at Allegiant Stadium. But before we get to any of that, I want you to hear from Lincoln Kennedy. Uh, we all know he's a very proud member of, of the Raiders organization. You know, very proud to have worn the Raiders uniform. Of course, he's on the broadcast with Jason Horowitz. Does a fantastic job. Uh, we were talking on Tuesday when myself, JT, and Lincoln recorded the Raider Roundtable. And I asked him about the Battle of the Bay. And, I asked, and this is before we got the news about Derek Carr. And I just asked him about the offensive line and what he thought the, the 49ers defensive line was going to bring to them on Sunday during the, the game at Allegiant Stadium because we all know that defensive line is really nasty. And he brought up the Battle of the Bay and what it meant to him. So I thought this was a pretty cool little nugget from Lincoln Kennedy talking about the Battle of the Bay. Well, here's the thing. This 49ers defense knows the, the – what, what's the best way? Knows the presence that this, this, this rivalry used to have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When they were in Oakland, trust me when I tell you guys, but once upon a time, I used to take pride in the Bay Area rivalry. Right. I didn't care if it was preseason, regular season, whatever. It was the Raiders versus the 49ers. It was a Bay, Bay Area battle. Battle of the Bay. Yep. Battle of the Bay that went tomorrow. Now, these young guys don't realize that. It's, it's not there for them. These new guys, it, it's not there for them. <laughs> but trust me when I tell you, when talking to 49er people, they understand it. <laughs> they want to they want to do it so you know to answer your question cube i'm hoping that these guys can resonate that feeling of pride that feeling of a rivalry 
that once was to go up against the 49ers. It's so much more than just another football game. So there you go. Again, it's a little bit different. Obviously, it's it's really taking a twist uh, when it comes to this game because of Derek Carr not being there. And so I'm sure nobody expects the Raiders to win this game. Uh, the line went from being a, a 49ers five-point favorites to all of a sudden being like a 10-point favorite for the 49ers. And by the time kickoff happens, it might be 12 to 13 points for all we know. So uh, obviously, everyone expects the 49ers to head into Allegiant Stadium and, you know, put the smack down on the Raiders. But we'll see what happens. Again, it's the Battle of the Bay. These guys should be out there playing for some pride. You know, they should want to play for their team or their team and their fans. You know, the, the, these guys should be out there playing for Raider Nation because Raider Nation is the one spending the money going to the game, buying the tickets, right? Go, spending the money in the hotels and going out to eat and, you know, rocking the jerseys and all the gear. These guys should have enough pride to go out there and play for at least Raider Nation at the very end of the day themselves as well as they're still trying to earn jobs. Not all of them have to earn their jobs. Like guys like Max Crosby, you know, he'll be around next year, but some guys are fighting for jobs. One guy. Jared Stidham, he's going to be behind center. I guarantee you he's going to do everything he can in this game on Sunday. Not saying that that means it's going to lead to a victory, but he's going to give it everything he has. Jared met with the, the media on Wednesday in the Raiders locker room following practice. Here's that convo. Jared, first of all, when did you get the news and what was your reaction when you got the news? Um, yesterday morning. Yeah, Wednesday. Yeah, yesterday morning. That's when I got the news uh, from Josh. You know, he talked to all the quarterbacks. And, yeah. Strip away just everything else around it. I'm sure this has been a dream of yours for a long time to be a starter in the NFL. What's this opportunity mean to you? Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, you, you dream of playing in the NFL, you know, as, as a kid and, um, and and to start a game, you know, in the NFL, it's a you know dream come true. But at the same time, um, I've been preparing, you know, since my rookie year. I, I've tried to prepare the same every single week, uh, whether I was the backup or the starter. Um, obviously, obviously, I've gotten to learn on, under a bunch of a, a bunch of really good guys, uh, players, coaches. So I've always tried to treat treat the weeks the same. Um, and it's no different, no different this week. Can you treat this week like any other week in terms of uh, preparing for Sunday? I mean, honestly, I like I said, I, I've tried to every every week so far this year. For instance, I've you know been the backup, and my routine has been the same. And, you know, I've tried to keep it the same. You know, I feel like if you try to overdo or overthink things, it can be detrimental. Um, so I've just tried to prepare the way that I know how and the way that I feel good about running the game with the game plan and so on and so forth. So I've just tried to keep things the same and, and uh, you know, prepare how I know how to prepare. How much does it help that you played under Josh for so long now? Oh yeah, no, it's been it's been great. Uh, obviously, you know, been with him in New England for three years, and now here for you know this year, and um, you know, coming the off season, you know, obviously that was good, uh, having a good understanding of what was going on. But you know, just like you know, every week this year, um, just tried to prepare, you know, with whatever the game plan is, and be as prepared as possible to go in and play. It's kind of a follow-up to that. Uh, I think everyone we, that talks about you, from Coach McDaniels to the receivers, they say you, you just have a better grasp on this offense than, than anyone from how long you've been on it. How, how do you think all that experience kind of translates that you can channel it on, onto the field? No, I mean, like, like I said, I mean, it's like anything, you know, like it's, it's like anything in life. When, when you do something repetitive, repetitively over and over again, you just get comfortable and um, at the end of the day, uh, my job is to facilitate the offense. <coughs> excuse me, in in certain ways, and um, I got to follow my rules and um, you know try and get the ball in, the, in these guys' hands and 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 do that do my job. And that's you know something I've just been trying to prepare hard for, and that's all I can do. Sure, have you yeah. been pleased with the well, Have you been pleased with the encouragement and support you've been able to get from your teammates and your coaches just since the announcement's been made? Yeah, for sure. Everybody's been very supportive. Um, you know, players, you know, coach, uh, you know, Bo and Nick and, you know, Josh, everybody's been very supportive and very helpful. Any questions that I have for them about the game plan or, you know, anything, I've just, it's been, it's been really good to, to have the support. For sure. Jared, obviously you don't have control over the decisions that are made and when they're made and how you get your opportunity, but you get the sensibility of, you know, you're, re you're replacing Derek, who's been here a long time and been a fixture around here and, and that, just that part of it. Right. No, I mean, Obviously, Derek's been here for an extremely long time. Um, you know, I had a chance to speak with him, and he, he's just—I can't thank him enough for everything that you know he's helped with, helped me with, you know, personally and professionally. Um, you know, him and his wife both have been very um, supportive and um, very welcoming to me and my wife here in, in our time together, and so. 
Um, can't can't you know speak highly enough of, of a Derek. I mean, he's just a great human being and obviously a great football player too. So um, yeah, I mean, he's obviously been here for a long time and, and stuff. So um, you know, I'm just gonna try and go out there and, and, and play the best that I that I can and I know how. So. What are the goals for you for these next two weeks? <laughs> my, my, I mean, obviously to win. I mean, that's that's why we all play is to is to win football games. So that's first and foremost. But I mean, my job is to to facilitate the offense and. Um, and run it how it's you know supposed to be run, and um, that's all I can do is just be prepared and, and try to do that. Well, can you look at these last two games as an audition since you haven't had a lot of snaps in the regular season? Uh, I'm not really necessarily looking at it like that. Um, you know, two great opportunities to go out there and play um, with the guys in this locker room. Um, you know, the NFL is a, a crazy business, so um, you know I'm just trying to be prepared as best I know how and. Uh, and do the best I can for, for the guys in this locker room. And, but ultimately, you know, obviously the goal is to come out here and win. So that's what, that's what we're going to try and do. What kind of challenge are your first starts against the NFL's top defense? Yeah, it's a great challenge. I mean, I, I'm a firm believer in whatever it is in life that you do. Um, you're not going to get any better unless you do it against the best. So uh, it's going to be a great challenge, you know, for us um, as a team. Um, you know, they're good in all three phases. And so um, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm, I'm super excited about it. And, uh, I think it'd be a great challenge for us, and I know we're looking forward to it. Any family and friends coming into town for this game now? I do, or? I do. yeah. Um, you said you got to speak to Derek. Did he have any uh, last-minute advice going into to such a big moment for you? Anything you took away from that conversation? Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously I'll keep most of it private between me and him, but um, the biggest thing, and this is what I always appreciated a lot about Derek, was just to always – always stay even you know never get too high never get too low um football is an imperfect sport and um you know you, you try to do obviously the best you can you prepare hard you know each and every week and um but to always always just stay even even though it was such a long time ago how much confidence do you have in yourself just based upon the success that you even have in the preseason you know having an undefeated record looking good in that regard yeah i mean i i think um for myself, I've always been very confident in my abilities to, to play football and, um, you know, just thankful for the opportunity to, to come out here and, and get my first start, you know, against, like I said, the best uh, the best defense in the league. So, um, but like I said, I've, I've always had I've always had confidence in my ability to, to make plays, throw the football and, and to facilitate the offense. You know, that's that's my job and I've I've, I've, I've worked hard at it and, um, you know, I'm excited to go out there and just, you know, help these guys, you know, hopefully get a win, so. Jared, when has Coach McDaniels talked about um, going into this game, not doing too much, and just uh, playing within your moves? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's that's just part of playing quarterback, is just um, not trying to do too much, you know, at, at, at times, and um, just doing your job. I mean, that's kind of what I've, um, it's kind of been instilled in my brain, you know, since being in the league, is just do your job, and, um, you know, whatever that may be. It may, at one play, it may not be much, and the next play, it might be, you know, the biggest thing on the play, so. Um, just trying to facilitate that, facilitate that the best I can. So there's Jared Stidham. And one thing I noticed from that sound, and we played it on uh, Raider Nation Radio 920 on Necessary Roughness on Thursday. When we were playing that, I was listening. Not only was I listening to Jared, I was listening to the background noise in the locker room. It didn't sound like it was a place that everyone was so sad and quiet and upset. And that's not a slight to Derek Carr. But what it is, it tells me that these guys are professionals and they're going to go and handle their business. Because even though they're missing their guy in Derek Carr, they're still going to go out there and handle their business. I mean, it sounds like business as usual in the locker room. That was one of my biggest takeaways. Not only what, what Jared Stidham had to say, but also the ambiance, the surroundings, hearing guys laugh. That's a good sign. If it was real quiet and everybody was whispering and this, that, and the other, you would think that, okay, these guys are down in the dumps. Instead, they sound a lot better than they did even a day before on Wednesday. So I think that that's a positive sign for what we might see as far as the effort goes on Sunday. Max Crosby, a guy who only knows one speed when it comes to effort. He knows no other speed but but one, right? I mean, even in the Pro Bowl, I mean, they had to change the Pro Bowl because of him. He, They basically had to say, hey, man, slow down or stop in the Pro Bowl, and he didn't know how to do it. So now they've changed what the Pro Bowl is going to be because of Max Crosby. This is only about a minute, but it's him in the locker room uh, following practice on Thursday. There's a business side to it, and I'm, you get reminded of that every so often. And yesterday yeah. would seem to be one of those types of days. Um, your just reaction to the decision that was made and, and things moving forward? Um, yeah, uh, obviously, you know, Derek's been a great friend of mine ever since he's been here. So, uh, you know, obviously it's a tough, tough time. But uh, like like you said, um, it is a business. And, um, 
we still have two games left. So, I'm, you know, the guys were focused on, you know, getting ready for the Niners. Um, obviously, we love Derek. Um, we got a ton of respect for him. And, you know, we're, he's going to be a friend for life. So, uh, you know, wish him the best. Absolutely. You know, with everything. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah, you know, we're focused on the 49ers right now. And obviously, you know, Jared Siddham, he's, he's been a scout team quarterback. He's done the backup role. Um, and the dude is a hell of a competitor as well. So, um, you know, he's getting a chance for a lifetime. So, um, you know, I'm going to be his biggest fan, you know, these last two weeks. So there's Max Crosby in the Raiders locker room, and he's got a lot of respect for Jared Stidham. He's going to go out there and battle just like it would be Derek Carr. He also showed and talked about how much, you know, he respects Derek Carr. And they'll always be friends, and he wishes them the best. But at the end of the day, he knows it's a business. And I know a lot of Raider Nation doesn't like to hear it's a business, but it is. It's entertaining for us to watch. It's entertaining for me to watch, you know, and, and it's my job, but it's entertaining. But it's still a business at the end of the day. The NFL, just like every other sport, is a business. I know a lot of people don't want to admit it, but that's what it is. And so when these guys understand it, and when you understand it, sometimes you understand why certain moves are made. So there you go. That's what I got for you with segment number two. Just wanted to take you inside the Raider locker room. I was really excited to have the opportunity to bring you that Jarrett Stidham sound. I thought that was really important since he will be the guy behind center the next two games. We saw him in, in training camp. We saw him in the preseason. Now we're going to see him in the regular season and see what he looks like. And, well, we'll talk about it, obviously, more on Monday, the results of the game on Sunday versus the 49ers. Coming up, segment number three, your calls and texts straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Before I get to that, though, I do want to tell you about the title sponsor of the show, BetOnline.net. They're your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there, pro football, college bowl season, basketball. They've got everything. And if you love sports podcasts, and I know you do, you can find those at BetOnline.net as well. They're the fastest and easiest way to get your betting information on. All you got to do is head to the website today on your laptop or your mobile device to learn about more. BetOnline.net. That is where the game starts. Here we go, Raider Nation. Segment number three of today's Locked On Raiders podcast. Your calls and text straight off that Locked On Raider podcast voicemail line, 707-654-4693. Let's start things off with a text. Jason in Idaho. Hey, Q. It's Jason from Idaho. I try not to message, but I have to get this off my chest. I've been a car supporter and agree it's time for a change. Either way, I'm listening to everyone talk about Brissett, Brady, Jimmy G makes me sick. To say any of them are better than Carr at this stage, I don't believe. Yes, Carr had a bad year, but the way this is going down feels like I'm wrong. Feels so wrong. I'm 49 years old, been a Raider fan my entire life. To see Brady in a Raiders uniform might be the worst thing I could possibly imagine. That whole conversation about taking care of homegrown sure went out the window. I was excited this year, and it feels like it couldn't have gone any worse, and it continues. That's Jason in Idaho. Thank you for the text, my man. And look, I've given all the respect in the world to Derek Carr. He has had nine years with the silver and black. He's done good. But just like somebody, and I don't know what you do for a living, Jason, but you might have a job that is a good job, and it pays well. And people think that you have a really good job. And you might say, yeah, I want to do a little bit more. I want a little bit better. Well, that's what it feels like to me, that this is, well, that's what's going on. The Raiders like the job that Derek Carr has done. They just want more. And again, I mean, hell, I've had really good jobs that I've said, yeah, I could do that forever. And I can be comfortable. Or I could do more and be better, right? I mean, it's just, I think that that's just really what it boils down to. And I'll say this, and I had a lot of people call me on my radio show on Thursday. It was pretty funny. Said they wouldn't even be happy if Brady was a quarter, uh, the quarterback of the Raiders and won them a Super Bowl. That, I think, is insane. I don't care if you, Jason, were the quarterback of the Raiders. If you won a Super Bowl with the team, I'd be ecstatic. I am 46. You're 49. I'm 46. I have not seen a, a Raiders team win a Super Bowl where I was invested in. They won in 83. I was seven, right? I wasn't invested in. Then I was still playing with Tonka trunks. I was still whatever, probably peeing on myself. I mean, who knows what I was doing at seven years old, you know, picking my nose. But it's just, it, it's, I would love to see anyone win a Super Bowl with the silver and black, right? I'd love for my kids to see the Raiders win a Super Bowl. I'd love to be happy and celebrate it like I was happy and celebrated when the Warriors won their first of four uh, championships that they won uh, earlier with Steph Curry and, and Klay Thompson. When they won that first ring, you know how excited I was? Because I hadn't seen it. I want to see the Raiders. I, I believe the Raiders. I talk about the Raiders. My kids believe the Raiders because of me. I would love to see. I don't care who it is. Like I said, you could be the starting quarterback, and I'd be good with that. As far as the homegrown guys, I'll tell you, they, they've, they've taken care of some, some of their guys. Think about this. One, when it comes to the draft, they haven't had a whole lot of a lot of guys to 
to extend, right? Or, or, or take good care of. But Colton Miller, that was John Gruden's first pick. They extended him. Andre James, remember, he was an undrafted free agent. They gave him a nice little deal. Daniel Carlson, remember, he got thrown away by the Minnesota Vikings, signed by the Raiders. They gave him an extension. A.J. Cole, they gave him an extension. Max Crosby, you know, a late-round pick. They gave him an extension. Hunter Renfro, late-round pick. Gave him an extension. Darren Waller, I know he wasn't drafted by the Raiders, but they found him on Baltimore's practice squad. Darren Waller didn't become Darren Waller that we know until he was, he was a member of the Raiders. They extended him. And Josh Jacobs, TBD, to be determined. Gut feeling tells me they're going to extend him too. So I would say with a team that doesn't have a good track record of drafting, they've actually done a pretty good job of taking care of their homegrown guys. And oh, by the way, Derek Carr, two deals already. And a third, even though the third one's probably not going to be exercised by the Raiders, he's taking home over $135 million from the Raiders. That's, that's a pretty good job of taking, being taken care of. Nine years, $135 million is not too shabby. <laughs> that's a really good NFL career. Because a lot of times, your average career is, what, three years in the NFL? And I know quarterbacks are different, but still, for a guy that has a, a losing record, and I know that it's not all on him, so don't, don't get that twisted. I get it. It's not all on him. For a guy who has a losing record, to be able to stick around as long as they have kept him around and given him that kind of coin, it's not bad. And the only reason that they're really making this move is because they have so much more coin that they'd have to give him. Basically, what they've already given him, just double that. You know, that three-year contract extension that he signed before this season got started was about $130-something million. He's made 135. Could you imagine giving Derek Carr another $130 million and you end up with maybe, maybe one one playoff trip, and I'm not saying that's what we're going to happen, but that's how they're looking at it. So, I don't know. Uh, next up, we got a call from Joe from Tennessee. He's calling to talk about the benching the car and his thoughts on it and what he thinks the Raiders should do. Here he is, Joe from Tennessee. Hey, Q, this is uh, Joe from Tennessee here, man, calling in uh, after listening to uh, all these this week's podcasts about what's been going on in the benching the car. Uh, and I'll be honest with you, man, after Saturday's game, I was so damn mad. Uh, you know, like he could hear me on the TV. I was yelling, hey, I'm done with you, Carr. I've, I've defended you as much as I could. But you know what? After I took a few deep breaths and thought about this, the old adage came to mind. Be careful what you wish for because you just might get it. And so now here we are to listen. We all said, and I've heard it here on this, on our, on your podcast, say, listen, we know who Derek Carr is. And you're right. We do know. You've mentioned it a few more times, a few times, how he's never been very good the first year in a new system. He's had what? Five, six new systems. But usually in that second year, he's done much better. He did real well with John Gruden because he had Gruden's system for what? Three or four years at least. So anyway, we decide to go in another direction well where do we go and you brought up great points we get aaron Rodgers and got to give up so much draft capital for a year or two tops tom brady for maybe a year or what where do we go i i you know i'm kind of at a loss uh for what to do i think it's it's kind of i think he deserved uh another year to see what happened I, I, you know, the guy who's played, who's done stabilized us, if you, as you put it, for uh, for nine years and gave his all for this team. Uh, and I think the other thing you got to think of is, like you said, I don't think Devontae Adams is wearing a Raiders uniform next year if Derek Carr ain't there. Um, I don't know. I was very dissatisfied with his play this year, like most other people. And, you know, he looked like his half his throws were like half cocked, like he wasn't really cocked back. and very indecisive, uh, but I still think uh, next year he probably would have been a lot better. Anyway, uh, we'll see. Mary Jared Stidham will will light it up these next two weeks, and we'll have our 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 answer. But I'm not holding my breath for that. Anyway, Q, uh, all the best for you and the rest of Raider Nation for the next uh, for the new year, and uh, go Raiders, baby! Just win. Joe, thanks so much for the call. I appreciate you. And yeah, I mean, I said it a thousand times, you know, he's always taking a step back in year one with a new system when it comes to Derek Carr, a new coach, new scheme, all that. And ultimately, as a collective, you know, not just Joshua Daniels, not just Dave Ziegler, but Mark Davis as well. I think they all got tired of 
wait until next year, get him this. He's faithful to the team. I think they decided that they just don't believe that they can win with him. So they're going to go in another direction. I mean, I, I know that it's, it's sometimes it's not that simple, but I feel like it is. I feel like they just believe that they, they know what they have and they, they know what it is. And, and I think that they have a plan that we don't know about. I don't think that they make this move if they don't have a plan that they feel very confident in. We just have to wait and see. And I hate saying that because, well, you know, that means that we have to trust the process. And who wants to do that, right? I know I don't. But thank you so much for the call. I appreciate you. Next up, I got a text from Jimmy S. in Houston. Q, I'm trying to come to grips with the, what the next few years are going to look like with this team. I'm worried about yet another total rebuild. Is there any hope that maybe this quarterback move has a lot more to do with Jarrett Stidham than anyone has given his credit for? Mike McDaniels really think there's a possibility Stidham could be ready for a real shot at being the man in 2023, or at least not a disaster at quarterback while the team bridges to a developing drafted quarterback next year? This is really the only way I see to avoid seasons of futility again. Any thoughts as Jimmy S in Houston? And yeah, thanks so much for uh, the text, my man. I appreciate you. And look, this is the one thing I, I feel very confident in, and I could be completely wrong. And if I am, then I am. I just don't think that this team can afford to have a rebuild. I don't think that the Raiders as an organization in Las Vegas can afford to have a rebuild where that's going to be a three to four year thing. I just, I don't think that that's possible. That's why I believe that they'll bring in a veteran that they feel like they can win with right now. They'll go and invest money in the offensive line. They'll invest draft capital into, into the defense and feel like that they could push forward and win. And oh, by the way, the Super Bowl is in Las Vegas in 2024. I really feel like they, they are going to try to do everything they can to try to push to get there. Not saying that they're going to, I just can't see because there's so much to do here in Vegas that they can afford to be a rebuild. Folks will literally stop coming to the games. Raider Nation that has season tickets will sell all their tickets. You might get a good glimpse of it on Sunday against the Niners. There's one thing that Mark Davis does not want to do is look out of that, uh, his press box or his, uh, his suite and see a sea of red. That's not what he wants to see. And I do believe he's going to see a sea of red on Sunday. But believe me, he's going to want to get that turned around quick, fast, and hurry. I don't think it's going to be a rebuild. I really don't. Uh, you know, and, and I think it's really important to keep Devontae Adams happy. I think it's important to keep Josh Jacobs in the fold. You know, Max Crosby has that four-year deal. I don't think you go through a rebuild with Max Crosby, right, if you're giving him all that money. Renfro, Waller, you just extended them. I'm assuming that they're going to be back next year. I, I just can't see... I can't see that uh, that being a rebuild. But then again, I thought the team was going to win 10 games and go to the playoffs this year. So there's that. I have no problem admitting when I'm wrong. Jersey Shore Raider, he's up next. He's calling to talk about Derek Carr and what's most important moving forward for this team in his eyes. Jersey Shore Raider, here he is. Hey, Q. Jersey Shore Raider here. It's been a long time. But I just wanted to call in, um, talk about Derek Carr, and just to say that I really appreciated Derek. Uh, he was a great, not well, I wouldn't say a great quarterback, but he was a very good quarterback, and I enjoyed almost every game that he played. Uh, made the games fun. Um, you know, I've been a Raider fan for over 40 years, and I know the quarterback position is the most important position, and I just find it hard to believe that in over 40 years, Derek Carr is the only franchise quarterback we've ever drafted. At least in my lifetime. I don't know if I'm missing anybody, but I don't think so. And, you know, just to go to go off of that, I think the most important thing is, uh, is drafting. You know, over the years, we haven't been drafting well. You know, from uh, Al, God rest his soul. But, you know, later later on in his, uh, in his career, he wasn't good at drafting. Reggie McKenzie was terrible. Uh, Gruden. And uh, Mayock weren't weren't good at all, and uh, you know the jury's out on McDaniel's and uh, Ziggler. But I just hope they um, you know hit it, you know for us. But um, you know I uh, to talk about McDaniel's, you know I want to give him a chance, and I think uh, I think he'll be all right. But I, I don't know. Uh, I really wanted to keep Basaccia and. Uh, you know, if, he, if the same results happened this year, we might have been staring at uh, Peyton as a coach, as a possible coach. Uh, and I just feel like we're always a day late and a dollar short. But, uh, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed, and hopefully uh, uh, McDaniels and Ziegler will uh, lead us into the promised land. But I just wanted to wish, uh, wish 
all you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to Raider Nation, and hopefully 2023 will be our, uh, our time to shine and into the future. Thank you for all you do, and uh, Happy New Year. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for the call, my man. And, yeah, the draft is key. I mean, it really is. You've got to have success in the draft. When you go into a draft saying that you have the normal amount of picks, you know, seven, eight picks, whatever the case may be, you've got to be able to get at least a couple starters and guys that you feel comfortable sliding into the starting role, right? You've got to be able to get a couple starters. And more times than not, the Raiders don't do that, right? And, they, and they, every once in a while, they'll find a guy, like when they drafted Max Crosby, remember what they told him? Well, you got to live in the weight room and, and develop some size, get with Deuce Gruden, and then at some point you'll get into the game. Well, Max Crosby came out of the shoots his rookie year and had 10 sacks and kind of put everyone on notice. was like, oh, wow, this dude can get it done. So, you know, it's just they've got to be able to get guys that are legit starters when they draft them. And then maybe like two to three other guys, probably two guys that you feel like, okay, if this guy goes down or someone goes down, this dude could be a surefire backup, right? You've got to get some talented dudes out of the, out of the draft. And more times than not, we can go over the draft if you want. We can go over the history of the Raiders drafts. More times than not, they just don't have that success rate. And it's not just the Gruden Mayock, you know, staff. It's it's not just the the Reggie McKenzie staff. I mean, it's it's been going on for a long time. They've got to break out of that shell. That's how you're able to let guys go comfortably, you know, when when their contract comes up without having to pay them, you know, because oh, they got a very talented dude right behind them. Remember what New England did with Chandler Jones? Remember they moved on from him early, traded him to the the Cardinals. Got some really good draft capital in return and moved on from him. And everyone said, oh, they like to move on from people a year too early. Now, they moved on from him very early. They didn't want to pay him that big money. But you know what? They didn't miss a beat. And he went and had a lot of success in Arizona. Didn't win, but he had a lot of success there, made a lot of money. They moved on from him kind of early, right? That's what, that's what you want to do. You want to be able to have that ability. I'm not saying just do that with everybody, but you want to have that ability when that contract comes up. You could say, hey, I'd rather let this guy go a year early while we can still get something for, for him than a year late. So the draft, you are absolutely spot on, man. The draft is where you've got to really hang your hat and do a really good job. Thank you so much for that call. We'll take one more text from East L.A. Raider. Q, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Save $40 million in pay Jacobs, defense, and O-line. Maybe just maybe we can finally get a solid overall team instead of practice squad players on defense. Love your show and listen every day, but Derek had to go. Glad we finally got rid of the final common denominator. There he is, East L.A. Raider, uh, talking about it was time for Derek to go. And I think that over time, especially if whoever they decide to be the next quarterback, and I don't think it'll be Jared Stidham. I think that was something that Jimmy S. in Houston had said, uh, maybe it'd be Jared Stidham. Jared Stidham's not going to be the guy. He might be a backup, but he's not going to be the guy, in my opinion. So, you know, depending on who the next guy is, I think that, Raider Nation will be happy once they see the success. Right now, it's been so long since the team has had success, it, it almost feels like, yeah, I'll just wait until I actually see it. And I don't blame you for that. I don't blame you for that at all. You know what? We'll go ahead and take one more call. I'll get a little bit greedy since the last one of the 2022 year. Uh, Chuck Raider in the ATX, he's calling to talk about Carr, a guy he's defended for years, but also talks about the inevitable, which is change. Here he is, Chuck Raider in the ATX. Yo, Q. What's up, buddy? This is Chuck Raider. In the Austin ATX. Man, Derek Carr is gone. I can't believe it. I've been defending the guy for years, but like I, t I called earlier last week, it's time for the Raiders to move on. You know, one of the things that I'm a little bit older, so one of the things I always explain to people is change is the only thing that's constant. So in the NFL especially, man, things change constantly. And when you bring in a guy like McDaniels, and look at the way the NFL's going, man. These running quarterbacks, you got to have a guy that's mobile, that's willing to take off. I mean, you look at the best quarterbacks, even Mahomes runs all the time. So, I mean, it's just time to move forward. You can't sit there and stay with a guy. And look, I love Derek Carr. I, don't get me wrong. I think the guy was fantastic. I know, I, and I also, he went through a lot of coaches, a lot of different OCs. Offense coordinators, I mean, he's had to go through a lot of changes over the course of his career there. And they haven't always had the best defenses. That's another big thing. But at some point, like, there's just throws that I can't, I can't look past. Sometimes he shows glimpses of greatness, 
And the other times it's just, what are you doing? I don't, I don't get it. And at this point, you, you got an eight, nine year window of, of watching him and he just doesn't get the job done. It's time to move forward. I'm going to root for the Raiders no matter what. Derek Carr was the last guy to play quarterback for the Raiders. Heck, my favorite quarterback was the snake, Ken Stabler. So I look at it, that's how far I go back. But I look at it like, you're going to start off fresh. Go get a young guy and maybe have a veteran next year and he can learn under the veteran. you got to draft somebody. they got a top ten pick. Man. This is the time to do it. There's a lot of teams in the, in the front of the draft that aren't going to take a quarterback. There's going to be a quarterback that will fall to them in that first round. I say you draft a guy, man. Take a chance. And then, you know, get a veteran in there to go ahead and take care of it up to that guy's playing time. It's time. Sorry. Sorry, Derek Carr lovers. I mean, not that I didn't love the guy because I do. I still do. I still think the guy's going to play. NFL guys, they play as long as they can if they love the game enough. All right. Uh, listen to your show every day, Q. Keep doing what you're doing. You're awesome. All right. I'm out. Thank you for the call, my man. And you're right. Change is always going to happen in the league. Change is always going to happen in life, right? There's going to be a time when I'm not doing this show. There's going to be a time when I'm not on the radio. There's going to be a time someone else is going to come and replace me, and they're going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? I mean, that's just that's just what happens. Change happens everywhere, and it's just one of those things. You just you got to roll with it. You either roll with it or you don't. I have people hit me up and say that, you know, they're not going to watch the Raiders anymore. They're not going to support the Raiders anymore. Uh, last I checked, you know, the tattoo that was on my back is a Raiders one. In the, it's Raiders shield, and it says Raiders. It doesn't say car. It says Raiders. I was a Raider fan before 2014, and I'll be a Raider fan well past 2022. <laughs> right? I mean, so before Carr got there, I was a Raider fan. I supported every one of those quarterbacks that were bad. I went through the list the other day. I, I supported every one of them, and I'll support whatever quarterback comes up next. Appreciate everything Derek Carr has done, but like I said, uh, the Raiders weren't born, and they're not with Derek Carr, and they're not dying with Derek Carr, in my opinion. I know some people don't agree, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. Well, that's all I got time for on today's show, Raider Nation. Uh, appreciate you. As always, thank you so much for a fantastic 2022. When we talk again, it'll be 2023. If you're coming to the game, man, meet me at the Torch. I'll be there at 10 a.m. doing the pre-pre-show. Definitely come out and say what's up. We'd like to meet you, shake your hand, say what's up, and, you know, talk a little ball with you. And if you're not coming to the game, uh, make sure you're safe. Whatever you do this New Year's Eve, this weekend, it's going to get crazy. I know it's going to be crazy here in Vegas, but it's going to be crazy everywhere. So be safe out there on those roads. and. Uh, make sure you take care of your family. I say it all the time as I end the show, and I really mean it. And matter of fact, I double down on it <laughs> this upcoming weekend. So Raider Nation, thanks again so much for making the show your first listen each and every day. Remember, you can find the Lockdown Raider Podcast free and available on all platforms. Again, uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you so much. And shout out to my man, Ari, who makes sure that we're doing a good job and we're up on YouTube on the daily. So until Monday, Raider Nation, until 2023, take care of yourself, take care of your family, love on your family. Most importantly of always, just win, baby.